Hello. Hi, you okay? I'm great, how are you? I'm good, thank you, I'm good. How have you been getting on? Um, to be honest, I've, I've enjoyed time off, honestly. I've, you know, I'm in the gym 24-7. Um, and when we got when we got told we had to, you know, close the facilities and it was a bit of a shock, you know, the first yeah. day or two. And then as days went on and we got the nice weather, I'll be honest, I really enjoyed it. So, <laughs> uh, but I think now, you know, we've 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 had our time off. We've we've enjoyed it. We've we've relaxed. We've chilled with our families, and I think. But I think now it's time to to get back to business. Absolutely. So, in terms of your your lads, what have you been doing? Is has there been a lot of kind of video calling and, and different things? Yeah, just checking up on them, making sure that they're doing the runs. Obviously, before we could get the pros back into the gym. It was basically, you know, making sure that they're on the road, doing the gym. I've got a couple of lads who live out of town, so, I've, you know, um, they've been doing their own runs. They've been um, Snapchatting, video messaging me and everything like that. So I've just just kept an eye on them. But, and, and you know what? Since we've got back to the gym, uh, the pros, they've, they've been in fantastic shape. So they've listened and they've done exactly what, what they're supposed to have done. I think any of the coaches that I've interviewed during this quarantine period, they've kind of said something similar in that, you know, they've been guiding their guys and, and it's sort of, they've, the guys have taken it on themselves yeah. to sort of, you know, take the initiative to train and stuff. I, I suppose that in this business, you have to be self-motivated in some format to, to be successful. Massively, massively. But I'll be honest, you know, I, I, I'd look at probably fighters around now and if you really, really got the fighters in the gym, got them on the scales. Honestly, I believe probably 25% of fighters would be ready to fight. Mm -hmm. They got that phone call within four weeks, five weeks. If they got, if they managed to get on one of the big, uh, one of the big promoters, what are gonna be doing behind closed doors? I honestly think probably only 25% of fighters. As a fighter, if you haven't got a date in front of you, it's so hard to be motivated, so hard to get you know, knuckle down and, and, and diet and especially what we've been going through. We, we've, we've just, I think with boxers, it's the unknown. We don't know when, when we're going to be fighting again or when the fighters are going to be fighting again. And I, and I think it's so easy for fighters to just think, I'll start next week or I'll start, you know, I'll start the week after. And that, that week after goes into two or three weeks before you know it. So mm -hmm. there's... There's a majority of fighters what what will have knuckled down, dieted, trained, uh, and and will be ready for that phone call. Um, and you have to take your hat off to them fighters. I, I'll be honest, I don't. I, I weren't one of them fighters. I really needed motivating. I really needed something in front of me to focus on and and, and knuckle down and and diet and discipline and. Uh, but but yeah, I think it's hard for fighters when they haven't, when they haven't got a date in front of them. So with that, then you know, with, with your own career, um, having to have something to, to be motivated and 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 something to kind of work towards. When you when you set yourself different goals or you had different fights, when you won or when you lost, on the back of that, then how what, what did did you take time off? Was it hard for you to get back in the gym? Um. I think on a loss, maybe it took a, a bit longer than what it would than if it was a win. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely, obviously, you know, you're licking your wounds and you're, you're you know, you're, you're trying to motivate yourself back to, to if, if it were your own fault or if it was just one of them things, you got beat by a better fighter or if you think I could have done better, you have to lick your wounds. Mm -hmm. And maybe it did take a little bit longer to, to get back in the gym as... As in, if you won, you won well, you know, maybe you, you weren't expected to win. It's a lot easier to get back into the gym that way uh, when you're coming back off a win. Um, but all fighters are different. Honestly, you, you, got ten fight, you get 10 fighters in a room, you ask them questions, you'll get 10 different answers. Everybody, yeah. All fighters react different. All fighters, um, they've all got different mentalities in. They all, you know, they all... They have different goals. Things motivate fighters different. Certain certain things will motivate one fighter, but might not motivate another fighter. You know, so it's 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 
he's getting fighters to to what 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 makes them click and what makes what drives them. And a good trainer will see that in a fighter, and a good trainer will will put that into a fighter or 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 put that where a fighter wants to strive and wants to succeed and wants to um, achieve. Absolutely. And in terms of your own motivation, obviously the, 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 the motivation um, you're saying to have a goal set in place for you to, to work towards. But when you broke it down, where did the motivation lie? Was it to get the win? Was it to make people proud? Was it to prove something to yourself? What was your motivation from that aspect? I think a bit of everything, really. Um, I mean, when I started at Brendan Ingalls gym, there was just full of champions. It was mm. champion after champion. And you just wanted to make sure that you were one of them champions as well. Um, everybody uh, bounced off each other in that gym. Everybody motivated each other. And I think at one time in, in the Ingle gym back in the 90s, I think there was something like, whether it was from an English, cha uh, an English champion, a British champion, Commonwealth European or even word, I think there were 10 champions in the gym at once. Now, if that doesn't more motivate any any fighter or any 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 aspiring fighter i don't know what's go, going to uh, because you've got kids what had what had basically come off the street and next minute you couldn't get them out of the gym they just wanted to succeed achieve and and, and really like push forward and, and and try and do something with their life and that was only by seeing such as myself such as like johnny nelson naz um, seeing us guys with the bells, with, with photographers, with um, with camera crews and everything. And you could see it inspiring kids and inspiring the younger generation coming through. And it was it was great to see. Absolutely. And, you know, when you talk about like the kids and, and especially the kids who've now come to you to be champions in their own yeah. right, um, you know, you can definitely see where the inspiration would lie. But it seems to be very unique in terms of, um, we'll say, the Ingle Gym way or from what we know of it, that the dynamic that you had as a team was very special. Because I think it's, it's very common for us to see, you know, sometimes at, at, at a lot of gyms you'll have a top dog yeah. and you'll have the champion and then you'll have, you know, the others that go in line yeah. to that. And the champion gets a lot of attention yeah. and is the main focus. And I think sometimes that can breed a little bit of negativity as well. Yeah. Whereas with you guys, it always seemed that you were all very supportive of each other as a team. Was that down to the way that Brendan coached and that was kind of the ethos? Absolutely, without a doubt. Brendan made that gym that there was no... There was no one bigger than the gym. There was no one above the gym. You know, everything was Brendan's way. And Brendan, um, it spoke to us all different, but it all meant the same. It, it all channeled in the same direction, if you, if, if you understand what I'm trying to say. It was, it was, it was Brendan's way, but it was, it was the right way for everybody. It spoke to everybody different, but everybody had the same goal. Everybody, you know, everybody went to support each other. Naz, what... You know, at first, before Naz, you know, Errol Graham and Johnny Nelson, they were flying the flag for the Ingle Gym and 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 and, um, and Fidel Slugger or two. Uh, they was flying the uh, the flag for the gym at the time. British and European champions. Then when Naz came and 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 he was world champion, it was like we 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 all travelled in the same cars to to watch watch one of the one of the guys fighting. We all went to an exhibition to do an exhibition at a working men's club, just in a, in a working men's club where you'd go on a Sunday afternoon and they'd be having a pint, having a few beers. <laughs> we'd, we'd, we'd get in there and do a bit of shadow boxing, do a bit of pads. Then we'd get a couple of the people out from the crowd and they'd be trying to hit us in the face and it, it was crazy. But Johnny, Errol, you know, uh, Clifton Mitchell, myself, Naz, we all did it. We all did it. It weren't as if, you know, one, because one was a champion, one got special treatment. It weren't like that in that gym. And, and that's why it was a great gym. And that's why it just bred success after success. Absolutely. And at that time, did you, did you feel like you were part of something special? Because we look back at that time now and it was really, it's unheard of, you know, yeah. and I don't think it will ever be replicated, you know, yeah. in, that, in that way. And it's kind of like part of, of, of boxing history, not just British boxing history, it's, it's, it's history in general. But at that time, did, did you all feel like you were part of something special? Or is it just a case of you're in it and you can't really see it? You know what, you were in it and you didn't even realise. It was only until, you know, when you probably 
when people like told you to, or spoke to you and said, you know, you're, you, you're a part of something special here, but you just take it on your shoulder and you just think, it's what we do. It's, it's not, it's not nothing. It's what we've done. I mean, I walked in Brendan's gym at six years old and I remember like seeing people, I uh, seen, seen the fighters getting the, the, uh, getting interviewed and, and, TV, uh, doing the uh, commentary and things like that. And it was just something you took in your stride. Um, I remember, you know, I never had time. I, I never had, I never, I, I was always at school. The only time I wasn't at school is if it had something to do with boxing. Like I never wagged school or anything like that. I wasn't the cleverest person at school, but I were always there unless it had something to do with boxing. But that's what, that's, what it was, we we just we were a part of something. We didn't realise how big or how good the 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 situation we was in, the 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 gym we was in. Probably until you know you look at things now and you look at you know, old videos and um, obviously it's, it, it was two years I think last week when when Brendan passed away. Yeah. There's been loads of videos, loads of pictures, and you think and you and you're playing them and you're looking and you're thinking, wow. That was special back then because even now, you know, we're in a great we're in a great era for boxing. With boxing probably has never been, you know, at such a pinnacle, mm. uh, and you don't still see stuff like that. What what it were like at the Ingle Gym? We were a part of something we didn't realise probably until after how big and how good it was. At what point was it for you when you kind of took stock of your own career and says? do you know what, I really have an opportunity now or I have the ability to do something really great here? I believe I had three parts to my career. I had a great start, a great start, you know, winning winning the British title, the youngest in 57 years, winning it outright yeah. in record time. Then I won a couple of international titles and I had a great start. I boxed for my first world title and I lost to, on a close decision to to a Canadian called Otis Grant. Great fight, a great fight. Probably just inexperienced. I lost that fight because of inexperience. Then I had the middle part of my career where I was up and down. I was getting fights. Uh, fights were falling through. Um, I was winning. I was losing a couple of fights. And, and then probably... I, when I when I when I was uh, the age of twenty eight years old, I thought, Do you know what? I've been down here for twenty. Uncle, <laughs> uh, okay. I probably. Um, so so yeah, twenty eight years old, um, and I left the Ingle Gym, and I decided that I needed a, a fresh start. I had twenty two years, and I went and joined Dave Caldwell, who was. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with, with us down at the Ingle Gym for many, many years, Dave. So Dave knew me. Uh, he knew everything about me. He knew my style. He knew, he knew me as a person. He knew my family. So I joined Dave. And honestly, you know, probably should have done it a couple of years before because I just got the, the buzz back again. I just ended up loving boxing again. It was a new lease of life. Um, and, and then I had a, a great, great finish finished to my career so I had three parts of my career great start up and down middle part and then a great finish to my career in those moments where you're talking of, uh, of you know making that decision to, to go and work with David how difficult is it to make those kind of decisions for your own career very hard I mean like I said 22 years down with down with uh, Brendan John mm -hmm. and Dominic there was like my second family there was like you know you know, family to me because if I wasn't at home, I was at the gym. So that was that was from being six years old to to twenty eight years old. Um, it was very very hard, but I knew I had to make that decision because if I'd have if I'd have stayed down there, I probably would have stopped boxing maybe a year or two after. Um, but making that decision, you know, it's. It, it's not for everybody, it's, you know, it's not for everybody that they've got to make that decision. If they feel like they're coming to a bit of a standstill in the career, it's not that everybody should change, change trainers or anything like that. We just, like I said to you before, things work different for fighters. But it worked for me. And when I left, 
when I left the Ingalls and I left, you know, amicably, I left on, on good terms and everything. So whenever I see Dominic or John, I mean, I still have fighters going down and doing some sparring down at the Ingle gym. Great, great relationship still. But I needed that change. I needed something different. And, you know, it was hard. But when I look back, it was the best decision I made. What do you think has been the biggest change in boxing since you were you were fighting? Um, I think social media yeah. becomes so so important for for boxing for fighters to to get get let other people see what fighters mm -hmm. are all, all about. Not just the the end product. Like when I was fighting. I think there was Twitter. I, I just started Twitter coming towards the end of my career. And, you know, there wasn't really... Well, there was Facebook, but it wasn't as as powerful as it is now. Instagram mm -hmm. wasn't wasn't around uh, when I was fighting. But social media is, is massive for fighters now. It helps fighters um, get their name out there, you know, let let fans know their what their lifestyle, what what they do day to day, um, mm -hmm. but it's a big part of of boxing our social media, and you know you only have to you if you want to know something about any fighter, all you need to do is go on Twitter, go on Instagram, go on Facebook, and you'll know exactly what they're doing on that mm. day. Is that a bad thing in terms of fighting, though? Do you know what? I don't think it is. I don't, but it's how you control your social media. Yeah. You know, you can't be an idiot on social media because it, it, it'll come up and it'll bite you on the backside. Yeah. You've got to be sensible. You've got to be sensible because and what you say on social media, everybody's not going to agree to you, but you can't let it affect. If you believe something and you want to say something, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to calculate, you know, if it's going to upset people or how much is it going to, how, what, what, you know, how, how far is it going to go what, on what you say? So you have to be a little bit smart with social media as well. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it can make you, it really can make you social media, but it can break you, uh, it, it can get you, it can break you as well. So you have we, to be careful with social media. Absolutely. And we do see a lot as well in that, you know, we see other fighters complain that, you know, certain fighters get opportunities because they're big on social media or yeah. because they're ticket sellers. And I'd like to know what your, you think your opinion of that is. I mean, is that just the business of boxing? Is that just the way it's gone? Should we just embrace that that's how it is and, and just you adapt to it and that's kind of it? I think we're going to have to. Um, I, re I really do think that ticket sales and, 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 you know, and pushing yourself out there, trying to sell tickets is a big part of yeah. promoters wanting to work with you as well. Uh, it's all right having all the talent in the world, but... If no one wants to come and see you, if no one wants to support you, whether it's at an arena or whether it's on telly, you, there's no point. You've got to have a little bit of something different. You see now, now the fighters on social media now, what I've got big fellas, they've always got a bit of something about them. It might be a bit of controversy. It might <laughs> be that they're a good looking guy. They might be a good looking girl. Even the girls now, you know, coming across great on social media. But you've got to have something a little bit different where it catches the public's imagination on, do you know what, I'll follow, I'll follow him or I'll follow her. Yeah. You know, it's... Um, but, but I think we have got to mentally get it into our heads that, that selling tickets and, and promoting ourselves as, as good and as, as much as we can, it's a big part of boxing. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, the, the social media aspect, I'd say, wasn't really um, prevalent when you, were, when you were active. But there was a lot of media and you would have been, you know, requested to do a lot of media, yeah. especially with the big yeah. fights that you had. How did you settle into that role? Did you, do, were you just someone that naturally kind of accepted that this is part of it? And, you know, or, or is it kind of one of those things where you're like, oh, I, was, I really want to fight, but I hate all that other stuff that comes with it? No, I'll be honest, we learned it through, from Brendan. Honestly, <laughs> Brendan would get, it, it'd be so calculated how he did it, but he, 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 what he was doing, he was preparing you for later on in life when, when a camera gets stuck in your face and it never, it never happens. It's like you get tongue-tied. But because we'd, we'd got cameras and, and, and Brendan would introduce us to, to local MPs and 
important people. And he'd basically put you in, on the spotlight and, he's, and, and he said, go. And you'd like, but honestly, so many of the young guys, so many of the young fighters in Bren, Brendan's gym, once you put them in, on, on, on the, in, in front of people to talk, you could not shut them up. And it only were, it, what he was doing is preparing for fighters when, you know, when a camera did get stick it, get mm. in front of your face and, you know, you did learn how to talk in front and it weren't just a, a one or a two word answer. You really could have a conversation. What Brendan would do is, he'd say, right, he'd get you in the middle of the ring and say, right, off you go, talk about yourself for one minute. And it, the ones what had just done it, it'd be like, uh, my name's Joe Bloggs and uh, I'm seven years old and, uh, you look around like that, but the guys what have done it regular and regular, you'd be looking at your watch thinking, all right, you've been in ring for three, four minutes now, nah, shut up, can, you know, let someone else have a go, but, but Brendan was so clever in things like that, it was very, I don't know, it's so hard to like, for me to tell you if, if you didn't really see it, you know, the guys what came through the gym and drifted out, they, majority, even what weren't fighters, they ended up being successful in, 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 in whatever they did in life. I mean, one person springs to mind who, who was a boxer, a guy called Nigel Bradley, um, and, and his, his brother, Thomas Bradley, good friends with Nazi, passed away uh, a few, quite a few years ago now. But Nigel Bradley, you know, such a nice kid, um, would box anybody. But outside of boxing, he, he got that business mentality. And Nigel is such a, 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 a clever businessman, wealthy and, and done really well outside of boxing. And that's what, that's a success story as well. Brendan would have looked at that and said, mm. you know what, that's, you know, Nigel came through the, came through the, uh, on the conveyor belt and he's, he's took what, you know, a part of what he learned in the gym, but also he's took what I earned and, and done it on, in, in business wise as well. So that's what Brendan did. It's just, you know, anyone that I've, I've um, interviewed that's at Ingle Gym now or that was at Ingle Gym, like, yeah. the stories, I mean, a, a film has got to be made. I mean, yeah. there, there has to be books, yeah. films, it has to be done. It's yeah, just best, so special. Yeah, bestseller, honestly. The yeah. Characters, what's been in and out of the gym, I mean, I mean, <laughs> there's a guy, there was a guy, um, there was a guy called Jimmy Wood, um, and he was an old fella, old fella, and all he used to do was run. They came into the gym, and he was a, a another businessman, but he was a he was a loan shark, so he borrowed people money, borrowed people money, and put a bit of interest on. But a very, very wealthy guy, a very clever guy. But again, a character in the gym, not not even coming to to be a boxer or, but just wanted to have a fight. Just came into the gym, and he had a, a brand new car, a, a top of the range car outside, and you'd think. Why would you want to come into a boxing gym and yeah. get the ring and have a fight with British or European world? <laughs> Why would you want to do it? You know, but that's that's what kind of building it was. That's what kind of that's what kind of place it was. It attracted many many characters. Yeah, just amazing. Do, do you miss it? I love it. I loved it. Yeah, I miss. I miss. You know, I miss the good days, and you know, we we had we had some good laughs down there. Mm. Um, but we all move on in life, you know. If I went, yeah. I go into the to the gym now. It's it's not the same. Um, we we, you know, there's a few people down there now who I still know, I still remember. There's quite a lot of fighters there. What I don't really know, and I don't really remember. Um, mm. So I I I I go to the gym when it's quiet, and I take some of my sparring, uh, some of my lads down for sparring. Um, but yeah, I mean. We had some good times, and I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd, be, I'd lie if I said I didn't miss it. But it's not the same down there as it were when we were down there. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of then what you went on to do afterwards, in terms of the coaching and different things, yeah. was that at what point did you say, okay, this is something that I wanted to get into, or you know, where does coaching lie for you? Is it giving back? To, in the same way that kind of Brendan, I suppose, gave you all opportunities? Or is it, you know, I want to have your own world champion? Why did you want to get into coaching? Well, I just fell into it, really. It wasn't something that I really wanted to do. Uh, basically, when I decided to hang the gloves up, I uh, I still trained at Dave mm -hmm. Caldwell's gym. I still doing a bit of training with, with some of his pros and some of his uh, 
some of his key fitters and things like that. And then a couple of pros, uh, Curtis Woodhouse uh, and a guy called Dave Fiddler, asked me to to do some training with him one day because I think Curtis's son were playing for Rotherham United at the time or it was the academy or something like that. So Curtis was a professional, but he, he, he thought he might as well, while his son's training across road from Dave's gym, he might as well do a, a couple of sessions. And from there, Curtis asked me to train him. Dave Fiddler asked me to train him. And then it snowballed and a couple of more asked me to train them. And then I ended up getting my own gym. And it weren't up until the... You know, we, we ended up getting Curtis to become British champion. It weren't until then when I thought, I like this. I really want to try and get, a, try and create more champions, try and help fighters achieve and try and help fighters, you know, you know, get their dream on, mm. on becoming a champion. Whether it's a central area, whether it's an English, whether, you know, whether their goals are, are there or, or, or there. I wanted to help fighters just achieve um, and I think in five years I've been a, a trainer now. We've done pretty good. So mm -hmm. now I want I want more. I want more champions, and I want to achieve more. Well, I mean, you've obviously done it yourself. So they 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 naturally must have a confidence in you in that you know what you say to them, it, it has worked because you've you've done you've walked yeah. the walk yourself. But but what do you say to them? I mean, what what does it take to be a champion today? Hard work, dedication. Boxing is, it's not one of the hardest sports. And, and, you know, Brendan used to drill this into us and we used to say, yeah, yeah. But over the years, you learn. Brendan, uh, boxing is the hardest sport around, honestly, is the dedication, the discipline, the sacrifice, sacrifices and, you know, and, and, and putting your body through the utmost pain and utmost um, pressure of, of training hard and, and dieting and it's, 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 one, it's the hardest sport there is, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, what does fighters have to put our body through? It's, you know, it's, it's not nice. It's not nice. But, um, but it's, one of the, it's one of the most self, you know, it's all about you. When you get that hand raised in, that, in the middle of that ring, you know, I, I couldn't, explain the feeling if i could bottle that feeling up and, and sell it in a shop i'd be the richest man in the world because that yeah. feeling, when you walk into that ring and you've got your friends your family screaming and shouting and and then when you get in that ring and you box and you know if you do win and you get you raise your hand honestly that feeling there's nothing like it there's nothing like it but getting to that is is very hard and you have to you have to do a lot to get to that to get to that place well it makes sense what you're saying because you know i working in the sports i often do ask and wonder why you know when you're involved in it from a media standpoint and you do yeah. even like the follow-up or, or the the build-up we'll say to a big fight night and it's eight you're only, you're only getting eight to ten weeks of, of the yeah. fighter's life yeah. with the emotion and the hard work and like you say the dedication that goes into it Mm. And, and it doesn't matter if it's, you know, someone, an amateur fighter or someone that has a world title. You know, there's, all, yeah. there's a, different levels of dedication and yeah. hard work that have to go into it. And then when you're on the night and the arena fills up and you get yeah. someone that gets their hands raised or someone who gets the, the last, yeah. you know, there's just, it's, 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 it's what makes the sport so great. And, 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 and you know what, you know, and you see the winners, the losers, the guys what, what draw, they, they all they all put the work in, they all put the work in because boxing is a dangerous sport as well as we all know boxing mm -hmm. is a dangerous sport and you can't play boxing. Boxing is not one sport where you can, where you shouldn't cut corners. Mm -hmm. It does happen. It does happen. Um, but boxing is, you know, over the years as well, it's, it's, it's brought a different crowd as well. Now you've got, you've got all the generations now boxing, Boxing 20 years ago, you get like your middle-aged people going to, to the shows. Now you get the younger generation, yeah. the older generation, because, you know, the promoters now, they've, they've done a great job in, in promoting boxing events, in, 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 in letting, letting the public see boxing in a, in a different light. Um, and it's great for the sport. It's great for the sport. I don't think, you know, would we would would we have a fighter in the UK 10, 15, 20, uh, sorry, 20, 25 years ago selling Wembley art? Not a problem, 80, 90,000. 
I don't think we would have. Now we have social media. I think that helps massively. Yeah. We, 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 the, we, we, we're getting a, a bigger audience from the younger generation all the way through to the older generation. Um, so boxing's now... More people are wanting to see boxing. More people are in, more interested in boxing. And it's great for the sport. And you know what? Fighters are getting paid better now. And so, sh so they should be. So they should be. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Um, before, I, while we're talking, everyone has an opportunity to send a question. Yeah. To ask you at the end of the interview. So I will go in and check it. But before we do that, I wanted to talk about obviously the exciting news that we have this incredible boxing game that's coming out. So everyone, no one can stop talking about it. Uh, it's like... <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, the guys at uh, Steel City Interactive, honestly, we went, myself and Dean at Empire Pro Tate went, uh, went up to see the guys uh, last Friday. And, you know, we, we, had a, we had a sit down. We had a good half an hour looking at some stuff. What, what, what? They're not bringing out now. They're bringing out in, in, um, in probably six, five, six weeks time. But honestly, the excitement is just, me and Dean are on, in, in the messages all the time asking, how's everything going? And we like kids in a sweet shop. One of the kids at Christmas, it's just, it's just so exciting that we're, we're, we're bringing something out what the people are demanding and the public want. You know, a boxing game, a quality boxing game, mm -hmm. hasn't been brought out for eight, nine years, I think it is. Um, was it EA Sports? That's EA the last Sports, one. Uh, yeah. Was it Fight Night? I think something like that. Yeah. Well, eSports Boxing Club is going to be better. I, honestly, mm -hmm. what I've seen, comparison to both games, eSports e Boxing Club is going to be better. And, and honestly, um, in, in, I think this week, we're bringing uh, another trailer out and get ready. Get ready, because it's just going to blow people's minds. We released, we released something... Um, couple of months ago and we got a great a great reaction mm -hmm. with that but this next one is just going to blow it out of the water so get ready all the boxing gamers all the boxing fans what are what are interested in um a computer boxing game on all on all uh, you know on all consoles and be and pc get ready because this is going to be something special and i'm excited to be a part of it to be involved in it it's very inv innovative. Uh, yeah. Would you would you have thought back in the day that you'd be in a position now, you know, about to release this this new boxing game that's kind of going to get unleashed onto the boxing community? Do you know what? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I never thought. I mean, I've all not that I've always been into computer games or anything like that. But whenever there's a boxing game, I've always jumped on it and had a go and played it or anything like that <laughs> to be a part of something what's what's going to take over the gaming world and it will it will take over this is how confident i am and and what i've seen at the guys at steel city uh interactive i, I really do honestly believe this this boxing game will take over over all, all the other games out there um it's something special and you know i'm seeing you know little clips every day um and I just, I just get so excited, and it's, it's great to be a part of something what, what people are going to be talking about for a long, long time. Absolutely. Well, I can't wait. I'm very excited for it. It looks yeah. great. Everything that's been out so far has looked so exciting. Yeah. And you know what? Other sports do it. So it's about time that boxing got up to date, you know what I mean, and, and replicated what other sports are doing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, UFC uh, is, is probably flying the computer game at the minute. We're, yeah. you know, with EA Sport. They're they're um, heavily involved in the UFC, um, so it's just left the door open for for us to bring a for us to to bring a boxing game out. Yeah, uh, you know Eddie Earn, you know he's he's done a lot. Well, I did I did see um, Ryan. You put out a lot of stuff about the boxing game, and then within a couple of weeks, Eddie was going out going, "Oh, we're going to do a boxing well, game." Before, before before Eddie did an interview and and said, you know. Wouldn't it be good to, to, to bring a boxing game out? And how ironic that it was only the week before that, that I went up uh, and had a meeting with the guys at Steel City to, you know, to talk about a possible, um, you know, getting involved in, in bringing this boxing game out. 
And when Eddie did that interview, you know, yeah. I phoned the guys and, and I said, we can't believe it. Eddie's opened the doors for mm. this boxing game and it's just gone mental. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're, uh, we're bringing out what the people are demanding. Absolutely. Now everyone gets to have a taste of what it's Absolutely. like to be a world champion. Absolutely. <laughs> From the comfort of their couch. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> right, let's have a look and see what everyone wants to ask you. Um, oh, uh, Brian Kennedy, 90, 98, has asked, who are your top five sports people of all time? Top five sports people of all yeah. time? Um, Michael Jordan. Fantastic. Been watching the documentary on Michael Jordan. Fantastic. The Last Dance. Fantastic. Yeah, oh, amazing. Amazing. Michael Jordan, um, Muhammad Ali, what he what he did for boxing, not just for boxing, for 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 the complete sport, for the com for, for sport. Um Floyd Mayweather. Um you know, I think I think in the nineties You've got to say, Naz took boxing to a different level. Um, Completely. What he did for boxing. Um, who else? Um, Tiger Woods is a golfer. I think yeah. he took golf to a different level as well. Incredible. I, I'm a big golfing fan as well. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> not that I can play very good, but I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's very interesting on that, you know, on that question. I interviewed um, Campbell Hatton last night and, you know, obviously he was talking about his dad and, and training yeah. with Matthew and different things. And, um, you know, we're talking about how the, the, the few, like yourself, Johnny Nelson, Naz, Jamie Moore, all these yeah. guys who achieve big over here or are in the UK and, and, and in Ireland, in Europe. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. How that small um, minority of fighters have gone on to inspire an entire generation yeah. of champions. And it's just incredible how sport works like that. Absolutely. And, it, and, and, and honestly, this is a big part of social media because you mm -hmm. can, all you need to do is type someone in on, on YouTube or um, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and you can see... You, it all comes up. It's all in front of you. It's fantastic what social media has done for for people what are fighting now to to look back at the you know um, the in the nineties or the eighties if they want to see fighters back in them days. You know when such as like when Floyd Mayweather when he when he was a pretty boy when he first turned professional. Mm -hmm. You know to, to see his career how it's unfolded and to see where he is now. It's great for for mm -hmm. such as like. Um, fighters um like Campbell Hatton it, 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 it's great it's great um, absolutely yeah right let's have a look and see if we get one or two more and then I'll let you enjoy the rest of your evening um let's see um Callum H has asked what are your best tips for what are your best tips while boxing in a fight in the ring so I think he means what, what tips would you have for, for being a fighter? I think I was a fighter. What could always, if I, I, cause I never watched fight, if I was fighting someone, I never watched tapes. I never watched videos of the fighter. I was that kind of fighter. What I could always assess someone within the first 30 seconds, what they're going to do or, mm -hmm. or what they're going to attempt to do. So it's always as uh, when that bell goes on that first round, don't just have a, assess assess what the situation is. Assess what you think your opponent's going to do, whether he's going to attack you, whether he's going to box you, whether, you know, he, he's a defensive fighter, um, a come-forward fighter. Um, so I'd always, the first 20 seconds, 30 seconds of my, throughout my, in every fight, I'd have always assess what my opponent was going to do in a fight. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's what Very I good think. advice. Um, Sheila Quinn has asked, um, so let me just read out this question. Um, she asked, outside of your own guys, who do you think has the potential to be a big name in boxing? Um, wow. Um, there's so many coming through now. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many, the younger generation. Do you through. see yourself in any fighters that are that are active today? Any qualities? 
do you see see any of yourself any qualities that you brought in the ring do you see see any guys replicating that now i think a lot more fighters now they're a little bit more relaxed a little bit more stylish a little bit more not i wouldn't say the ingles style but a little bit more flamboyant they they mm -hmm. they they're a little bit um like such as Josh Kelly, I, I really like Josh Kelly. I think he's a very, very talented fighter, young fighter coming through. Um, he's still got plenty of work, but mm -hmm. you can see the potential that he's got got plenty of talent. Um, so I think a lot more fighters now aren't just a come forward, crash bank, wallop fighter. I think a lot more fighters now. And I think that has a lot to do with the with the setup down at the Institute of Sport with Robert McCracken. I think he's doing a, a great job with the Olympic Olympic guys, what are turning pro? Mm -hmm. They're a lot more relaxed, a lot more stylish. They've got a lot more about them. Absolutely. Well, on that, there's a question that came in, and it's from Sean Sean O'Rourke, and he's asked. Um, We've obviously just heard recently that AJ and Fury will potentially fight next year. Two fights, uh, yeah. preliminary uh, announced. Uh, what are your comments on that, and, and who do you think takes it? He's asked. Um, I think it's a. Uh, it's a fight what what we need to see, mm -hmm. um, and I'm and I'm gutted for Dillian White. If if how, you know, how bad I, does everyone feel for Dillian watching, White? Watching that story unfold, and I'm I'm mm -hmm. I'm absolutely gutted for him. It's a fight we do need to see, but Dillian White needs his shot. Dillian White mm -hmm. has wait, waited over what is it a thousand days now, or something like that, like three yeah. over three years time or something like that. I think it's so sad. But anyway, that's that's another story. That's Dillian's that Dillian's got to got to do what he's got to do with that. But I think it's a great fight. I think it would be a travesty if it didn't have happen in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's crazy as well. But it's again down to money. Um, Tyson Fury is definitely definitely the favourite. Um, but I just I've just got a feeling that. I've just got a feeling that uh, Anthony Joshua doesn't have the respect for Tyson that everybody else is, is, is now showing Tyson. And I just think it would be, I think it would be a 50-50 fight down the line, whether AJ would knock Anthony, uh, where AJ would knock Tyson Fury out or, or Tyson Fury would, would be AJ on points. I really, it's one of them fights you you'd have to watch it, how it would unfold all the way through the mm -hmm. camp, all the way through the media, press conferences. You'd probably have to make a decision as they walk into the ring. That's, yeah. that's how tight that fight would be, honestly. But Do you know it, what? And even the conversations have started already. I mean, they've, yeah. been, going, they've been ongoing for so long. You yeah. know, who takes it? Who wins? What's the, what's the style? What's the game plan? Yeah. You know, by the time they fight, everyone is just going to be like, Do you know what? We don't care. Just get in the ring. Everybody will change the minds 10 times yeah. over 10 times over yeah, yeah. <laughs> right very last question and it, I'll say best for last it's from Empire Pro Tape Dean Sheriff <laughs> and he says <laughs> can we talk more about Empire Pro Tape taking over the fight game <laughs> the best tape out we'll, there we'll talk about Empire Pro Tape if I start getting some free tape off Dean <laughs> <laughs> The best one. <laughs> I did. I did when I when I when I knew you were coming on. I sent him a message because he he'd reached out to me. And he was like, yeah. "Oh, make sure you get Ryan on now. Great story." Yeah. And I was like, "Absolutely." I, I thank yeah. you for reminding me. I need to get in touch with him. And I just sent him a message yesterday, and I was like, "You know, thank you. You know, I have Ryan on tomorrow. It'll be a great chat." And you know, he, yeah. I was like, "You know, Annie, do you need, want me to say anything?" He's like, "Just you know, mention that everything good that he's doing right now is because of me." Yeah, Dean. <laughs> Dean, I had, a, I had a meeting with Dean uh, before Dean got involved in the boxing game. And I had a meeting with Dean and I introduced him to a couple of guys and, and one was Jamie Sheldon. Uh, and what Dean, what Dean's done in the last, I think it'll be probably about four years now mm. uh, from when I had that first meeting, where he's come from in four years' time from there to where he is now in boxing. He's done a fantastic job. And, it's, really? and, and, and do you know what? His tape's needed throughout the boxing world. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know what? At the back of it, it's someone who is a massive boxing fan absolutely. and is passionate about the sport. Absolutely. And that's that's why I think he, he makes a difference. Definitely. Definitely. You can send me a check after this, dude. <laughs> yeah, 
and me. <laughs> yeah, both of us. We'll take our checks now. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, Ryan, I'll let you go. Thank you Thank so you. much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, anytime, anytime. That was a super chat. And, and hopefully yeah. we'll get more developments with the game. We look forward to seeing it. And hopefully we'll have shows back. And we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll meet each other then. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll tune in in the next week because... Uh, Steel City Interactive will be releasing something very, very, very special. Brilliant. Can't wait. Can't Brilliant. wait. Take, Take it easy. Thanks very much, yeah. Ryan. Thank See you, you later. Bye-bye.